Hello YouTube, James here from Tech Idiots. Just a quick video on our home lab, our server rack. Normally the videos tailor around and focus on the actual server room or whichever you want to call it where we actually work here. Um, all this type of area and so forth. But I just thought I'd do a more detailed um, overview on actual what's in the actual server server rack itself, what we have, what we're planning to do uh, and stuff like that. So um, yeah, I'll see you a bit further into the uh, server rack. Hello, right, so we're a bit further in now to the actual server rack itself. Now this is, I'll just give you a quick overview of the actual server rack itself and I do apologise for the fans and stuff and some of the servers and switches. So this is a 42U rack, this was a hundred and fifty pound I'm going to say, I can't remember. Um, with no side panels, no front doors, and no top with the extractor fans, etc. Just the bare metal base frame. Um, I don't even think it was 150. I think. I don't know. I will post it on the screen at some point. So starting off at the bottom here, now you have to excuse the cable management. Um, there is no point in us trying to organise any cable management at all. As you can see, we've kind of like just moved some st stuff to the uh, actual left out of the way of the, the screen. Um, but the majority of it is just a mess. I mean, it's all a mess. And uh, we're just always in and out around the back of this server rack at the moment. Um, tinkering and uh, playing about and, and, and so forth. So at the bottom, we have, well, this is a storage area for loose supplies, power supplies at the moment, um, just out the way. And to the left is a custom built Unify video server. It's running Windows 10, it's an i3-3100 um, no it's not, I tell a lie, that is, I'll post the details I think that is the Celeron G4 4400 I think I'll post it I apologize we've got a little battery pack here for uh, our camera our new camera which we're recording off now for new for batteries and we've got the humidifier packs uh, we had a problem here with condensation not so long back which has now been resolved with insulation um, along all the walls and stuff um, our Next server up is a DL380, two of them actually, but the first one, uh, we have hard drives which are, I guess you could say on order, um, they're just taking ages to arrive, um, they are the 146 gig, 146 gigabyte capacity drives, 15k SAS drives, 2.5 inch. Uh, this one currently is running Windows Server 2016, we're just having a mess around with that. At the moment, this is a uh, dual core 5650, 2.6 gigahertz, and there's two of them, uh, 12 cores each, so that's a, a full total of logical processors of 24. And the same goes for the um, VMware ASXi 6.5 version running on this at the moment. Um, this has a couple of VMs, we've just spun up another VM. Uh, at the moment, just messing about, we're looking at system center and, and loads of other different. This is exactly what the four to prat around with. Eventually, we think one of these servers will be our domain controller because we do plan on setting up a full domain network in here for us to log on to and be able to manage it. Um, I also think it might be an idea for the home to be on the domain as well um, so we can manage policies and restrictions and so forth. So the second one up is again DL380 and that is again that is two dual core, uh, two CPUs, dual CPU sorry, uh, X and Xenon's 5650s. Um, the bottom one's got 48 gig of memory uh, and the top one's got 32. And so the bottom one is just a dedicated server, it's not running in a Hyper-V or virtualization software. Um, it is just literally running just the actual operating system 
on top of the bare bones server. The second one is running uh, ESXi 6.5 VMware and it's got a couple of workstations, uh, a couple of virtual machines running just for lab purposes. We've also installed a CD drive at the same time. Uh, we, I think we plan on putting an SSD in this one uh, just, to, just so we can just mess about. Now this one here is um, Server Case UK Logi Case. This is a 2U. It holds 6 3.5 inch mechanical hard drives. It's got 5 in at the moment and 1 SSD. And the reason why is because the motherboard will only take 6 SATA. Um, so we do, ex we do plan on extending that at some point. But then again we're also considering what's the point as we are upgrading our NAS server from this to the DL380E Gen 8 uh, so we're in the process of looking for caddies for this and um, populating this server with 2 or 4 terabyte Western Digital Red Drives uh, that holds 14, there's also 2 at the back above the power supplies uh, so we're thinking this might be our new uh, NAS server at the moment. We are looking into also a HBA uh, controller for full pass-through visibility of the drives when we're running free NAS. So there's a lot of discussion and topics online regarding this subject. Uh, it can get confusing. We are confused a little bit on what the best solution is. We have bought a 420i RAID card before we kind of looked into it a bit further. So that was our mistake, I guess. Um, we're not sure if you get full pass-through on that particular RAID card when using it to have all 14 drives. So, yeah, we're still toying with the idea whether free NAS is the right solution still. We're thinking about just going full hardware RAID uh, instead of going through ZFS. Um, so, yeah, that will be a separate playlist of videos in its own right uh, at some point. Um, so yeah, just going back down here, we have our NAS server at the moment, uh, so yeah we are looking to upgrade that, especially when we start video editing, now that we're starting to produce uh, a lot more videos now, um, so storage and, and etc and workflow is becoming a factor now and we need a server which can cope with that particular type of workload and stuff, there's only two of us. Um, and so forth. So we'll see. It might just be a case that we need, um, you know, network attached uh, fibre, um, direct link, direct attached linkage for 10 gigabit, two cards, one in the video editing machine, one in here. So we've got a direct link to this server for 10 gig. It saves us messing around with a 10 gig switch, um, which is a cost, and so forth. Before we go full 10 gigabit in the network. I mean, we don't need it at all, but why not? It's becoming rather cheap these days. So this is this server is a, a, an i3. This is a 3100 i3. And this has got 8 gig of memory. It's got 5 Western Digital NAS drives in there. Um, it's got an SSD in there. Um, so it's been absolutely fine, it's got all our files on it, all our documentation, all our project work, upcoming pro project work for the channel, you, you name it, it's got a load of PDFs on there, reading materials, coursework on there, a um, load of software, saves us downloading, um, you know, such as Putty, um, Notepad++, we just go straight to the drive, straight to the software folder uh, and, and install it. From, from the actual server if need be rather than going online to the websites and so forth so it is handy uh, definitely worth having a NAS drive or NAS server sorry in your home lab without a doubt I uh, did recently a video on this I'll post it in the top corner um, this is something we've just upgraded to which is the Raspberry Pi 4 2 gig with a PoE hat this is our custom 3D printed rack mount 1U rack mount to hold the um, Raspberry Pis, so we was running uh, a Pi 3, not a Pi 3 Plus, uh, that was running our Unify controller and it was our Pi Home, our DNS server. So this is now taken over that, those two services, 
uh, and it's doing really well. It worked first time. If you're interested in watching how we did this and what, how we swapped over, uh, the card pop up will, will show up in a minute. So, also, just whilst we're down here, we've got a very old four port uh, VGA um, KVM. So, this is it's absolutely fine what we use it for right now. Um, our monitor, though, which we've had years, is now. Uh, is a 1920 by 1080 it's one of the very first 1920-1080 panels out I think we've had it for six, seven years um, but this doesn't allow native resolution of 1920 by 1080 so it's, it's not a problem but it would be nice to have the full resolution when we are using the actual operating system itself and just move this and go to sleep mode um, as you can see the, the, the actual Resolution is a little bit too big. It's not 1920 by 1080. The max resolution, I think, is well. We can have a quick look whilst we're on here. Um, did I click on that? Oh yeah, sorry, display. Um, so yeah, it's 19. Wow. So it's the old 4.3 aspect ratio as well. So it does look stretched. It's 1024 by 768. Uh, the max resolution we can get out of this. Um, 800 by 600 so yeah um, we do need to look into upgrading the KVM because they are, there are more servers coming at some point um, so yeah that's the uh, the actual spec of the server there 12 cores, 24 threads enabled for virtualization. it's got 48 gig of memory DDR3 ECC um, it didn't come with 48, it came with 24 and we bought another 24 just so we had that extra room for VMs and stuff. So this is our very first network switch we bought. This is uh, a GSM 20, uh, 7224 and we just recently added the SFP fibre link. Um, and the only reason we've all added this is because it runs to our 16 port 150 Unify PoE switch which is running our Pi which is on PoE and also the 6 cameras um, which is doing an absolute fantastic job. We've had it about a year now so the reason why we moved the uplink into SFP is to free up a PoE switch uh, port which allows us now to focus on um, ready for when we're ready to uh, populate the 1U Raspberry Pi rack with more Pies with PoE. So yeah, that is just literally a quick overview of our home lab in our server rack. Um, if you would like more videos on the actual home lab and server rack, I'll definitely make just its own dedicated playlist for when we start putting stuff in, taking stuff out, rearranging, cable management, uh, what's running what because um, I know those type of videos are very interesting um, to the likes of people who are enthusiastic like myself in regarding IT and computers and servers so yeah alright guys for more videos uh, stay tuned please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one thanks for watching